Good morning. I'm Brett and welcome to my backyard. And this morning we're going to be harvesting a few green beans. Uh, well, that may be a bit of a misnomer because as we'll see here in a few minutes that not all of them are green. And what I'm growing and you can see in the video here are what they call bush beans. Gen generally our green beans come in two different types. You've got a bush bean and a pole bean and your main difference is these here are kind of uh, self-supporting they can grow like any of your shrubbery whereas uh, when our video the other day with our peas you saw the little tendrils they put out to grab on and grow higher and some of those pole beans uh, can grow up to six or eight feet tall and if you're limited on space a pole bean may be a good variety i talk to a lot of people about growing and very small backyards, uh, container gardening, maybe having to grow from a, a balcony, you might have a small apartment where you can only have a few plants there. So if this is something that you're wanting to try, I would usually suggest something like a, a pole bean in that case, uh, where you can put a little support coming out of your pot and be able to get a lot more beans in a smaller amount of area. But uh, these, these are a bush uh, variety here. And so we're gonna harvest a few uh, in just a second to show you how we're doing that and um, a lot of them they used to be called a snap bean and the reason being is because when they're ready you should be able to easily just snap them from the vine and then also they should snap in half very easily so let's get started and let's just see what we've got going on today and I'm just gonna come over here and when we're looking for them we want them to be of a good size. We want them to still be rather smooth. See how easily that snapped off of there. And uh, you'll notice it's relatively smooth here, but it's it's got some pronunciation here. The the beans are starting to to grow inside there. You're starting to be able to see them. Um, most of these that I'm going to be harvesting are going to be a little smoother than this. Now I'll show you one that I think is a little bit more bumpy than rigid than this one. But um, that's the individual beans. If you're wanting to grow and uh, peel these back and uh, just eat the, the individual beans inside, you probably want to let them get a little bit bigger than this. And then uh, later in the season, when we want to be collecting our seeds, we're gonna let these beans swell and you'll notice some definite ridges in there. And uh, to the point where the the bean itself here, the pod, actually starts to split open uh, from the swelling of the bean. And we'll do that when it's time to harvest for seeds for planting. And uh, living here in East Texas, we're gonna do that. And uh, here pretty soon it's gonna be getting a little warm for these. But later in the summer, we'll be planning to get a fall crop. We should have enough time uh, to get some more of these because beans generally, they like it warm, but they like uh, temperatures to max out around the 95 degrees, which is where we're at right now. We're in the 95 degree days, so they're getting some good growing, but the the lows temperatures at night are, are coming on up and pretty soon we're gonna be up in triple digits here. And so these are gonna try to go to seed, but let's see, let's see how easily this one snaps here. See, there we go. See how easily that snapped there. That's uh, why they used to call them snap beans, but uh, this is a good one here. Um, this one I believe is called a contender. For those that are following, want to know which ones I'm harvesting. Let's see, I got two right beside each other. I can't remember which one's which. Yep, that one's the contender. And this one over here is our tender green. And let's see. For some of y'all that may have trouble getting down like I do, the, uh, having something to get across your harvesting area like this may may help you out there. But if I can get this one in the picture, you can see this one is, is slightly more pronounced there with the beans. This is still nice and tender, but you can see it's just, just starting to, to plump up there on each individual one. So I usually want to be picking mine right before this point which is where I would say 90% of these are right now. I think we're gonna have a good harvest out of them. But uh, these are still very edible. Uh, some people 
may prefer these, but they just start to get a little bit tougher. And the, uh, the uh, outer shell, let's, let's try to snap this one. You see how it's a little bit more, more flexible there and stuff. Just a little bit more chewy, a little more, a little less tender there. And then let's see, I got a couple different varieties here. And like I said, we're harvesting green beans today, but they may not all be green. Uh, this one here, for instance, uh, this is a good one. This is a Cherokee wax. I don't even know if my camera can get all this one. There's a long bean. Look, look at that. Look how big that thing is. That's a. Uh, it's getting close to seven inches there. That's a, a good bean there. Got several of them. Good flavor on these. Not quite as sweet as the green bean. And then right behind the camera, I can't really get this one in the same shoot because I got a lot of lettuce in here behind that I was doing a video on cutting some of that for lunch the other day, but it's a little thick for getting the camera in there. But I want to show y'all, this is a, only my second time growing this one, but I'd rather like it for a little color. This is a, a Royal Burgundy. Very nice bean here too. And so let me get another one of these over here just for comparison. So let's see, we got our tender green, our Cherokee wax, and our Royal Burgundy. And so look at that color there. If you like a little diversity and a little color in your garden, I would suggest growing all three. And the reason also that I would grow different varieties is we never know from year to year. Uh, some seeds have a lot better viability rate some years. And so planting a few different kinds helps us ensure uh, to get some sort of harvest that year. Also, you know, there's a uh, certain years the conditions or the pests they may attack one variety over another and so planting a, a few uh, varieties of each one helps us to get a crop of something every year and so that's what i try to do with everything like the the peas and the lettuces i was showing y'all a few days ago and my tomatoes and peppers you can probably see at the top of the screen here i got my next round of tomatoes and peppers planted and a few other things over there that are going to go in the garden as well um, but keeping a, a variety of each one helps ensure we'll have something for the season uh, succession planting I like to plant at least every two weeks I start another round all through the season even in the hot months here in East Texas uh, starting something every couple of weeks even if one round doesn't have as good a viability, that helps us have food all year round. And even going into winter, well, you know, when we get to where we can't have as much, but we're putting it in the old shed out here, we can still have a few things to eat on during the winter. Well, anyway, I hope y'all enjoyed that video. And uh, please, if you did, be sure and share it. That helps us a lot. And y'all make it a great day.